There is no doubt that a top-notch wedding planner or day of coordinator will be your ticket to a smooth and seamless wedding celebration. And today we're going to review 10 key questions to discuss with them so that you're on the same page and ready to tackle any challenges that arise. That's all coming up next on the Wedding Planning Podcast. Thousands of engaged couples have planned simple, meaningful, and affordable multi-day, multi-event wedding celebrations, and you can do it too with Wedding Weekend by Design. Wedding Weekend by Design is a digital wedding planning package specifically for couples who want to maximize their wedding celebration across multiple days and multiple events. Whether you're stuck in the initial thoughts of, I don't think we can pull that off with our time and budget phase, or you've already committed, but you're finding yourselves in a tangled mess of half-made plans. Finally, I have an incredibly straightforward six-step framework to planning your multi-day wedding celebration from start to finish with absolutely zero guesswork. Visit weddingweekend.co to get started planning your dream celebration today. That website again is weddingweekend.co. Enjoy the show. Why, hello there, and thank you so very much as always for joining me in this week's brand new episode of the Wedding Planning Podcast. I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're sailing through your engagement. And of course, I hope you're enjoying these weekly meetings and our time spent together. Now, as I was creating today's show, I spent a lot of time thinking about how so much of what we discuss here on the Wedding Planning Podcast is surrounding what you could actually consider to be wedding pre-planning, your wedding vision, your priorities, your values, and getting those very important things figured out before before you charge ahead into more strategic decisions like choosing a venue, a photographer, catering, etc. So a lot of our time is spent in that wedding vision phase. At the intersection of those two phases, so between the internal work of defining your vision and your priorities, and then on the flip side of that, the very strategic external work of actually bringing your vision to life. So when you're hiring your vendors and you're making important decisions, between there is a very important wedding planning milestone. And that is choosing a wedding planner or coordinator to work with who can help you seamlessly bring your vision to life. As you research and look into hiring a wedding planner or coordinator, or enlisting a loved one to perform this critically important role for you, you are gonna have a lot of questions come up. And your first set of questions should be what level of assistance you require and or what level of assistance does your budget allow for. There are lots of service levels ranging from full design and planning services that span a year or more. And then we can come all the way down to a day of coordinator who will work on site the day of your wedding leaving most, if not all, of the planning details and follow-up up to you and your partner. And then, of course, there are endless variations and service levels that fall in the middle of these two examples, and we're not going to go deep into all of that in today's show, but you can definitely find past episodes where we cover this topic in great detail. So take a look at that podcast feed and scroll back through those previous episodes if this is a topic that you'd like to learn more about. Whether it's your intention to hire someone full service to bring everything to life over the coming months, or you're simply hiring a day of coordinator for all those last minute details, or literally anything in between, there are some very important questions to discuss that will minimize any surprises and will set you all up for smooth sailing as you work very closely with this person potentially over the coming months. If you have not already committed to or hired a planner or a coordinator, these questions are going to be a great starting point for your search and interview process. And if you have already hired someone to help you coordinate, most of these questions are still very applicable. 
and can be worked into your next meeting. So if you hear anything throughout our conversation today that you have not covered with someone who you've already hired, then definitely carve out some time the next time you interact with them to get things hashed out and make sure everyone's on the same page. So here we go, getting right into the 10 important questions to discuss with your potential planner or coordinator. Number one is pretty basic, and that's going to be availability, pricing, and any additional services that they offer. So for example here, can you also help us with a welcome party, our rehearsal dinner, and a post-wedding brunch? Or another example of a great question here would be, what is your pricing structure for additional hours outside of your posted package prices? Are your posted packages flexible if we have a unique situation that doesn't quite fit with what you have listed on your website? If there's one thing I've learned in the years of producing this podcast, it's that every single wedding situation is very unique Every couple has very different needs and priorities and working with someone who is skilled at and willing to be flexible is simply a must. And that starts with their availability, their pricing and their additional services that they can offer to you. Okay, question or discussion point number two is who else will we potentially be working with over the course of our relationship? Who are your assistants, any other team members? What is their role in the planning process? And also what will be their role at our actual wedding celebration? So on our actual wedding day, having a crystal clear set of expectations for exactly who's going to be answering your questions and exactly who is going to be your day of point person is so critical. And point number three, this probably applies more to you if you have not yet committed to working with someone, is can you share firsthand reviews and testimonials from past couples who you've worked with? There is absolutely no better way to get a crystal clear picture of what it's going to be like to work with someone than to hear it straight from couples who have had that experience in the past and who are willing to share. And I hope that what they're sharing is positive if you do decide to go ahead and work with this person. But again, it's like a crystal ball into what is our experience going to look like? That's just such a great indicator. So if they don't have reviews readily posted on their website, which I would hope a vendor would have that on their website, but if they don't, most definitely ask if they have those available for you to review. And discussion point question number four, does your past experience and areas of expertise fit naturally within our overall wedding vision, our venue, and our top priorities? So for example here, if you're planning a long wedding weekend celebration to take place at your parents' ranch, where you have personally sourced 12 separate vendors to make everything happen, then it is key that you hire someone who has proven experience in that very challenging, very dynamic wedding environment. And that's in contrast to a wedding planner who maybe has only worked within a very controlled venue with a fixed set of in-house vendors. Those are two very, very different weddings. So you just want to make sure that whoever you're hiring has experience with the type of wedding and venue setup that you are imagining. And that's not to say that that would be a complete automatic deal breaker if someone who you completely vibe with and you're really getting along with and you're really seeing eye to eye on your unique vision, if that happens to be a venue that they have never worked at before or a wedding style or type that they technically have not planned before. Again, I don't call that a deal breaker. It's just something to look out for and to make sure that you're on the same page with your vision at the very start. And here we go with discussion point number five. This one is really, really important. What can we expect in terms of ongoing communication, both frequency and style? So to go back to clear expectations, we touched on this earlier in the show, but I want to spend some more time here on this one. Setting a set of clear shared expectations is just 
hands down, simply the best way to have a successful outcome. And that goes for pretty much any wedding product or service that you decide to book. Okay, that was so important that I'm going to say it one more time quickly. Setting a clear and shared expectation at the beginning of working with someone is the best way to have a successful outcome, period. I never condone making assumptions. You have got to ask straightforward, clear questions. So if you're getting a vague promise from someone of something along the lines of, oh, I'm always here to answer all of your questions. That needs to be really broken down and understood in objective and actual substance. So I'm always here. You can ask me questions anytime. What does that mean? Can I text you and expect a response in one hour? Can I text you and expect to hear back in 24 hours? Is text not on the condoned list of communications? Does it need to be email? So just lay out all the ground rules for phone calls, text, and email. And I am definitely not implying that any vendor should or would be available to you 24-7. That is obviously off the table. That's not reasonable. But if you are operating on an assumption, there's that word again, that you'll get a response to a really pressing question in just a quick, quick little couple of hour turnaround, but your planner doesn't answer calls on weekends or took a four day weekend impromptu and didn't let you know that they were gone, then you're going to start to encounter friction and frustration. And I want you to try to avoid that at all costs. And the best way to avoid it is to lay out all the exact expectations from the very beginning. And number six on our list of questions and discussion points to go over with your wedding planner or coordinator is what do you need from us and how can we help you be as effective as possible? This doesn't always come up and isn't always completely obvious, but in any client vendor relationship, you have very special responsibilities as well. So relaying important information in a timely way, following the communication guidelines that have been set up, replying to questions and inquiries promptly, just to name a few, all of these are your responsibility to make sure that this relationship is flowing seamlessly. Coordinating suit and tuxedo looks for your fiance and your wedding party can get pretty overwhelming. That's why Generation Tux makes it simple, fun, and convenient with online suit and tuxedo rentals that allow you to do everything online from the comfort of your own home. Generation Tux specializes in online suit and tuxedo rentals with high quality men's formal wear rentals starting at just $99 and award winning customer service. They offer over 25 styles of suits and tuxedos available in a variety of colors and hues with thousands of accessory color combinations. I love that they offer a free home try on and even swatches so that you can match colors to your decor, your venue, and the rest of your wedding party. You can try Generation Tux for yourself by visiting generationtux.com. Build your head-to-toe looks, get free swatches, a free home try-on, and manage your entire wedding party online. That's G-E-N-E-R-A-T-I-O-N-T-U-X dot com. Brilliant Earth's mission is to cultivate a more transparent, sustainable, compassionate, and inclusive jewelry industry. Their ethical, stunning, and one-of-a-kind wedding rings and bands offer unique designs for the perfect symbol of your love. Less than 1% of diamond suppliers worldwide meet Brilliant Earth's ethical standards, and 98% of our gold and 97% of our silver is from recycled sources. Brilliant Earth is the global leader in ethical and sustainable fine jewelry and offers both lab diamond and natural diamond selections. 
I absolutely love their online tool that helps you find the wedding band that pairs best with your engagement ring style, giving you a generous list of recommended band styles to choose from. Check out all of their beautiful pieces at BrilliantEarth.com. That's BrilliantEarth.com. Susan's Travel Services is so excited to partner with you to plan your honeymoon, destination wedding, or maybe even your bachelor or bachelorette party. Susan and her team have been planning dream vacations for 27 years, and they are truly the best in the business for start to finish planning services. Travel and new experiences are incredibly special to me, and Susan and her team have helped me plan some unforgettable vacations, including a bachelorette party in Cabo and a family anniversary celebration in Cancun. They meticulously researched the best all-inclusive options for us based on some very specific priorities and the professional assistance in choosing location, resort, activities, and transportation was absolutely priceless. From all-inclusive resorts in Mexico and the Caribbean, overwater bungalows in the Maldives, or that African safari that you've always dreamed of, save yourself hours of research and guesswork and let Susan and her team find you the best options for a -a once-in-a-lifetime vacation. Reach out to Susan and her team today by emailing info at susanstravelservices.com And be sure to let her know that I sent you and get $50 off your final booking or $200 off your destination wedding. Her email one more time is info at susanstravelservices.com. And then on to number seven, regarding preferred vendors. This is a good topic to spend a little time on. With preferred vendors, if this is something that your planner or coordinator has a list of preferred vendors, get a feel for that business relationship and the affiliation. So some more detailed questions to ask, are you willing to work with anyone who we choose? This is big because if choosing your own vendors is important to you and you sense any type of friction, then you should note that as a real red flag for working with that particular planner. I'm not here to judge preferred vendors and lots of planners work with them and it makes complete sense in a lot of situations. For example, preferred vendors, this can be seen as a huge convenience. So you hire a wedding planner and they come along with all the people who they've worked with for a dozen years And just you end up working with all of them and you know they're amazing because you love your planner and your planner loves them. That is huge. That is a huge convenience. It's less research and so much less work for you to do. On the flip side, though, just to explore all the things, if you're wanting to independently research and choose who you work with for various products and services, just confirm that that is an option with your wedding planner from the start of your relationship. This really ultimately ties back into your priorities and being really clear with what you value and what is most important to you. In terms of choosing your vendors for one couple, your top priority may be getting the absolute best price. And for another couple, it might be wanting something completely unique and custom, no matter what it costs. It doesn't matter which one. In either example, a wedding planner's list of preferred vendors may not line up with your top priority there. So this is a really important thing to clarify at the start of working with any planner or any venue, I should say, which is a topic that we're not going to get into today. But a lot of venues come with a set of preferred vendors. And it's important to know if you're going to be constrained or if you're going to have the freedom and creativity to choose your own team. And very important question discussion topic number eight for today is who is responsible for the day of timeline? Who's responsible for managing the multiple cohorts and groups of people on the wedding day and any other satellite celebrations that this person will be helping you with? So this could include guests. It'll include both sides of the wedding party, family, friends, vendors on the day of. 
And here comes in a familiar topic that we've reviewed today already, which is communication. Some of the most glaring, unfortunate mishaps over the course of a wedding day stem from communication issues, which is so frustrating because given some pre-planning and some careful thought, it doesn't have to happen, but not every couple is as thoughtful and proactive as I know you will be. All of these things, or most of these things, I should say, not all, most of these things can be avoided when you have a clear communication plan. So as we're exploring this point, who's going to be responsible for managing everyone? Think of things like who should be where and when, who can track down someone who's not where they should be at any given time, who's going to communicate with someone who's running late or who's lost, and who can track down any given vendor. Managing all of these different people and all of these different moving parts is easily one of the biggest and most important jobs that your planner or coordinator is going to do for you, but it only works if they have all the right information and contact information from the very beginning. And then the other side of this is that you, your fiance, your wedding parties, immediate family members, and your vendors all need to know exactly who to contact for questions or when any problems or issues come up. And the contact person, maybe it's all one person. If you're only working with one coordinator, they are going to be your main point person. But that's not always the case because oftentimes planners and coordinators work with a team of other people on your wedding day. So you will need to, number one, confirm your responsibility in supplying the contact information for all of the important players on your wedding day. Number two, Confirm who should contact who in case of questions that come up or any issues. Number three, double check all phone numbers and contact information that you're supplying. And number four, make double, triple, quadruple sure that everyone is aware of exactly who to contact and then double and triple check that they have entered that information into their phone so that there's no scrambling around on wedding day. 30 seconds before you're supposed to start walking down the aisle is not the time for your aunt to accidentally get locked into a bathroom stall and for your mom to not know who to call to get that figured out. So this is important stuff. And again, it's these little things these little mishaps that are so avoidable, you just need to be on top of that communication plan. Okay, moving into our second to last point for today, which is what's the game plan? Oh, this is an important one. What's the game plan for an unruly guest or an uncomfortable situation during our celebration? And that should include the ceremony, the reception, and any and all time in between. If you have anyone in your crew who is prone to drinking too much, getting loud and aggressive after drinking too much, stealing the microphone, and you're concerned that they might end up giving a 25-minute toast when you didn't invite them to, any of these like potential landmines or potential problem children, I'll call them, should be brought to your planner's attention and not to call them out and not to embarrass anyone, simply to say privately, here's my concern about XYZ guests. Can you just have a heads up and be on the lookout? And then what's the plan for handling that? It should not involve you, ideally. But again, we're just being really proactive and trying to make it so that any little fires that arise can be put out seamlessly and hopefully no one will even notice. And then our last question slash discussion point for today, what is the backup plan or what's the process for managing unexpected things like illness, bad weather, last minute vendor cancellations, or anything else that you can foresee happen uh, given your unique situation and setup. And then in hand with that, do you have a process that we can follow 
to be prepared for things that come up that we will be directly responsible for. I really hope you're not going to need to use one, but I will say that in years and years and years of experience doing this, something, something, something goes not according to the plan at pretty much every single wedding. And it might be something big and it might be something small, but something is going to happen that you didn't plan for. So to have your coordinator be really proactive about that and really reassure you of, yes, I have a backup plan. (laughs) Maybe the backup plan is just, I will hide it from you and you won't know about it. And that's what you're paying them for. And that might be good enough. All right, we made it through all 10 for a written recap of these 10 questions to discuss with your wedding planner. You can visit the show notes when you have a hands-free moment, or you can head over to our website, which is weddingplanningpodcast.co. You can find all of our past podcast episodes that are available on the feed by visiting the podcast episodes tab on our website. And if you are loving the Wedding Planning Podcast and you would be so kind to take just a couple of seconds out of your day and leave a five-star rating and review wherever you listen, it would really, really mean a lot to me. Sharing a few of your kind words, maybe your favorite episode in literally just one or two sentences is the best way for me to reach more engaged couples. And I want to help as many of you as possible with down to earth, straightforward and simple wedding planning advice. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for those kind reviews. And we'll meet again next week. Same time, same place. You know, what's the number one biggest regret that newlywed couples share? It's that our wedding came, went, and was over in the blink of an eye. So why not extend the experience out across multiple days and multiple events and make it a wedding weekend? There are just six easy steps to planning a life-changing wedding weekend, and you can access the formula right now when you visit weddingweekend.co. Take advantage of flexible payment options, or pay in full and get a complimentary wedding strategy call when you visit weddingweekend.co. I'll see you there.